Hi everyone, welcome to another video of Roman Just Codes. I'm Roman, and in this video you will learn how to easily integrate Google Places API in your Angular PWAs and web apps. Let's proceed. As you know by now, I'm building this fictional package delivery Angular progressive web app called UPS, where I've integrated features such as Google Maps, custom animated pins, and integrated APIs such as the Google Directions API, added Firebase authentication, etc. And in this episode, I'll be adding the ability to place pins on a map based on a precise registered location using Google Places API searching capabilities. Check it out. Your current location will be denoted by a red pin. Tap on your profile pin to uncover the Google Places search feature. Start typing an address and immediately you get a drop down with hints about the location you want to find. Select it and boom! You get not only directions from your existing location to this dynamically found one, but also we get the pin to be positioned there as well. Custom info window should work the same. You can toggle this functionality on and off. You can switch to a completely different location and everything dynamically changes as well. Check also how the time and distance between your location and the new location selected also gets updated, so that's pretty useful. What we're trying to do is simulate multiple scenarios where the delivery truck updates its position along the map with the time and distance to arrive to your location. You can clear the Google Places API search field. I added that feature myself. And of course, log out, which lands you right back in the landing page. Let's code. First, make sure you have the Google Places API enabled in your Google Cloud Console account, where you manage all your other cloud APIs. While you're at it, make sure that you have the Google Directions API and the Google Maps JavaScript API enabled as well. If you don't have them enabled, Click on the Enable APIs and Services button above. Search for the desired API, in our case, the Google Places API, and click Enable. In my case, it shows Manage, but for you, it would say Enable. Just click it and you're good to go. Same thing with the Google Directions and Maps JavaScript API. Back in the project, make sure the Google Maps API library reference link. Aside from your Google Maps API key, it has the query string parameter libraries equals places. Next, install the NPM package that wraps the Google Places API inside a neat autocomplete field component by running the command npm install ngx google places autocomplete. In the app.module.ts, import the required modules needed. I'll be doing some data binding on the Google Places input field, so I need to import the forms module. And of course, to add the Google Places API functionality, let's import the Google Places module. In the import section, let's add both modules so Angular knows about them. With this part all set, let's proceed to the map page component. I'll spare you the details on how I created the container that holds the Google Places API component. I'll only focus on the component itself. 
It may look like a regular input type text field, but it has some decorations and spatial properties. It has this special directive called NGX Google Places Autocomplete. This is what gives it its special functionality that when you type, it gives you the Google Places dropdown. And this is the key right here. This event called Unaddress Change. You provide an event handler that, upon the user picking the desired place information found, it triggers your event handler, passing in the metadata associated with that place. This ng model you see here, this was added by me so I can implement a simple field clearing functionality, hence the reason why we imported the forms module. Let's proceed and add the required CSS for my Google Places API sliding panel component. It is a simple implementation based on CSS transitions and classes as well as Angular properties. Feel free to take a look. I'll add some properties here required by that functionality. Places text, a string property data bound to the Google Places API autocomplete field. Toggle places search, a Boolean property that I'll use to toggle the visibility of that panel on and off. I'll also do some refactoring where I'll hold the reference to the two marker pins throughout the lifetime of the map. So I'll create a marker pin for the source. I'll call it source pin. And one for the destination. I'll call it destination pin. I'll start the refactoring of the code by removing the hard-coded locations I had before. And I'll replace it by first capturing the user's current position and holding on to it in the property called Center. We'll make the destination to be the user's current position. The source will be the truck's position, since it will be the one moving. So the center of the map will always be the destination or the center. We'll remove the source marker pin. We'll add it later as we receive the information from the Google Places API. We'll hold on to the destination pin reference here. And since we won't call the directions API or draw the route at this point, we'll remove the set route polyline method execution from here. With the refactoring done, let's add the capturing of the Google Places API information. I'll create the event handler for the on address change event, which I'm calling handle address change. This method, as mentioned before, will capture the metadata associated with the selected desired place. I'll grab both latitude and longitude from the event object passed. These are the coordinates of the place selected. I'll extract them out of the event.geometry location object. Since the source is the moving truck pin, reset the source position object with the newly acquired location coordinates. If the source marker pin has not been initialized, let's go ahead and do so. I'll use the previously used source marker pin. I'll 
otherwise if it is let's just update the position by calling the markers set position method after all of that is said and done then it is when we can call the set route polyline method the set route polyline method remains the same as it has been driven by the same properties we had before for source and destination. Save and refresh. Let's go through the whole workflow. Here we have the current location denoted by the destination marker pin. Let's toggle the Google Maps API functionality. Start typing the address to get the autocomplete. Select the address. Done. You got the route between your current location and the location picked from the Google Places API. The custom info window displays the correct distance in minutes based on the selected location. Clearing of the Google Places API field works well. Let's test it with a different location. Regardless of how many times you do it, the Google Places API and the Directions API work in conjunction to render the correct information on the map quickly and accurately. The only last thing I'll do as an improvement is on how the marker pin appears initially, which just pops in. I want it to drop from the air onto the map. For this, all you have to do is just set a property to the source marker pin called animation for which you have two options, bounce and drop. I'll pick drop since the bounce will make the marker pin bounce infinitely. Save and let's go through the workflow quickly one last time. Okay, expose the Google Places API panel, type your address, then select it, Nice, you saw how it dropped from the top and landed on the map, right? A subtle change that improves the experience. Centering on the map and custom info windows still work as expected. Remember, you can toggle the Google Places panel on and off. Clear the field, start over again. And that's it. This is a very useful feature and allowed us to get rid of the hard-coded locations that we had before for a more realistic implementation on this Angular PWA. Hope this inspires you to implement it in your own apps after you saw how easy it is to do so. Stay tuned for more upcoming videos in this Angular PWAs and Google Maps series where we'll be adding other cool features to make this PWA more robust and useful. That's it for this video, so please stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated and please like this video if you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching.